Thank you everyone for coming to listen to me talk about fashion. Um, I know it's something a lot of you would like to be doing more so than listening to, but hopefully this today will help give you an idea of what the opportunities are out there. Uh, but I threw this up there because, well, most of us want to be fashion designers. And uh, I think this is pretty true to home. Um, being in the industry for the last five, six years, I've worked in just about every position. Um, and I can tell you more often than not, I feel like the guy in the bottom right corner <laughs> going a little crazy sewing till 2 a.m. Um, the fashion industry is very fast paced and it's very challenging and it's very energetic, but it's also what drives us and motivates us to keep going through with it. So what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is all of the different positions that there are in the fashion industry. As the product coordinator, as she explained, my role is to work with every single team and make sure that everybody works together cooperatively within our PLM system, which is product lifecycle management. It's a really technical term. It basically just means getting it from the designer's pretty sketch out to the retail stores for you to buy it. So when you think about fashion jobs, other than fashion designer, a lot of us don't really know what the titles are out there. I know myself, when I graduated, I had no idea what on earth I could do with my degree. There is a multitude of positions available. They tend to have really obscure, random titles. But I'm going to explain to you a little bit of what they all are. When we talk about fashion design careers, um, they fall into different categories. Firstly, there is your traditional designer. Then we have product management, product development, tech design, pattern making, as well as buyers, merchandisers, quality control, textile sciences, which is a really new aspect, as well as some entrepreneurship activities. Like they said, I have my own business, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later if that's an avenue you want to go down. Now, we'll also look a little bit about how to get started and where to study, because you're all at that point where you have to start choosing your directions, as well as what the job outlook is, as well as the salary expectations. I know it's an important one for everyone. And at the very end, I'll take your questions and answers, so write them down as we go. So designer is probably the most sought after role. And this is because being the designer, you really need to have the combined experience of all of the other roles. You do see a few people who'll come in as a very low level assistant designer, but for the most part, we see designers coming in as sample makers or pattern makers, assistant merchandisers, assistant or junior product managers. Because you really need to know all of the components that are going to go into a style. You have to think about what you want to make. Maybe you want to make something really high fashion, but if you can't find the factory or you can't access the fabric or the materials or trims, or you just plain can't afford the cost of making that garment, you're never going to get your designs to market. Now, we all know designers get to do a lot of shopping at Silver Jeans Company, where I work. Our designers are traveling the entire globe. Because we're marketing to Europe, to Asia, we have markets in Japan, as well as Australia. In addition to North and South America, they're doing traveling three, four times a year for about a week at a time. This is usually really exciting and fun. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Um, we had last season where our designers were supposed to be going to Japan when they had the big earthquakes. It was a little helter-skelter. Some of our designers went, some of them didn't. So there are some interesting aspects when you get into traveling and seeing those unique countries. When you're designing a product as well as a designer, you really aren't designing just for you. I know everybody thinks, oh, I have these great new ideas, and I want to showcase them, and this is what I'm going to release. But you really have to design to fit for the company that you work for. You have to take into account the product branding and the corporate image. It's not about you. It's about what the market demands. This is the biggest challenge. Designers often want to do the really expensive details, but if you're working for a really new company, they probably can't afford it. When I first started at Silver, our designers used to do absolutely everything they could possibly think of to the jeans. They'd put fancy back pockets with studding and bling and sandblast and heavy wash and every possible treatment they could think of. And then the samples would come in, and all of a sudden, they'd be told, strip the garment bare. You can't afford any of it whatsoever. Really take it back to the bare bones, start from scratch. And it was really frustrating for our designers because they were constantly having to redo their work over and over, working really late into the night. So what we've done now is we've actually, using our product management systems, which is the computer system for all the components and all the design, our designers are now building smarter. They're actually having to use computers to actually spec out their garments ahead of time. They know what it's going to cost for the fabric for the material, for the buttons, for the trims, everything that goes together. So like I said at the beginning, designers really have to think about the whole big picture, not just the pretty fluffy sketch that you're drawing. 
but designers do get to do a lot of that sketching and you're gonna have a really nice environment at Silver Jeans, I can tell you. Our designers have an office about the size of this room. There's about six designers. They have tons of space, comfy couches. It's a fantastic environment. So in addition to the travel, they really get to sit there and enjoy what they're working on. And as a designer, you can't be shy in a corner either. I know this drives our designer Janice nuts half the time, but as a designer, you have to present your line and sell it to the salespeople. So she's the one who's standing up at all of the big line releases saying, this is my new top, here's how the collection goes together, here's why we did these different jeans and the different silhouettes, here's why I did eight flares, two skinnies, so many short skirts and capris. So there is that selling aspect as well as a designer. So what do you need to do for skills? Well, as a designer, of course, you do need to have the traditional you know, skills in draping and pattern making. Do you practice your fashion illustration? Um, one of the things that I found most interesting is that in school, we had to do everything sketching by hand. This drove me crazy because I suck at sketching, okay? I don't know about the rest of you, but I cannot draw a proportional person to save my life. Um, the funny thing is when you get to the industry, everybody does computer illustrations, or at least a lot of the companies are. So you can use a croquis and use programs like Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop to do your sketching. So if that's something, if you're someone like me who struggles with sketching, don't let that be a deterrent because there are programs and resources and technology that will help you and that's really the way that the industry is going. So if you do have an opportunity to take any of these courses, I highly recommend it. Our product development teams is where I actually first started off. They're the people who are working really close with the designers. So once the designer has done their pretty fluffy sketch, they're gonna pass it off to this team. And these are the people who are looking after the samples. So when the samples come in, they're the ones who are gonna be trying them on, seeing how they measure, how do they fit. They may be helping to create the specs, creating the blocks and the standard silhouettes that will make a standard garment. At Silver Jeans, we're really known for having that perfect fitting pair of pants. And it's our product development team that's really honed that fit to make those jeans fit exactly the way you want. These are the people who have a tape measure around their neck all the time. They're the ones who are coordinating with the fit models. And if you don't know what a fit model is, they're a person, like one of you guys, who fits the standard size of the company. So our base size is a 28. So if you wear a size 28 silver jeans, in theory, you could be a fit model for us. And the fit model tries on the jeans and gives feedback about how do they fit? Are the pockets in the right place? Are the pockets deep enough to put your cell phone or your keys? Do you use the pant have the right rise? Or are they too high granny jeans? Do we need to lower them? That's what the fit model's doing. And the exciting thing in this position is, is that the product develop team often gets to go to the factories. So they're actually doing as much travel as designers, sometimes even more. Um, myself, this is a picture, I actually got to go on a trip uh, for just over a week to Hong Kong and to Macau with our, with our team over there, because we have a joint partnership in Hong Kong. And so I not only got to visit the factories, but we also got to do a lot of tourist things and explore the culture. You're finding more and more as this industry becomes globalized, they're not just a factory who you think of as your sweatshop or your manufacturer whose job is just to sew. They're your partner. You're going to have growing relationships with them. They are actually an extended part of the team of the person who works right next to you in your Winnipeg office. This job also involves a lot of emailing, again, because you are working with people overseas. Usually the first while you spend the first hour or two in the morning going through a lot of emails. Doesn't sound very glamorous, but it's how things have to get done when you're working so far away. If you wanna start off in this area, it's great entry level, especially coming out of any of the design schools. Um, it is essential and helpful to have a degree in fashion or technical skill. However, it's not necessarily mandatory. If you have a strong background of sewing instruction experience, you can get into this field as well, taking that route. In my department, I'm actually the only person who has a formal degree. The remainder of my coworkers have all worked their way up in the industry, having done extensive work working on sewing floors in factories, small, gov um, small garment manufacturing houses. So they have the technical experience without necessarily the educational background. That's the thing with fashion, it is very flexible. Um, the most important thing, as I said, is really get your skills down. This team has a lot of responsibility. You have to make sure that everything fits exactly perfect. If the fit isn't right and you don't catch it, and that shipment gets rejected because the fit is terrible, the pant looks atrocious, it's just ugly, 
that designer's creation they work so hard on is never going to get anywhere. And then the designer is going to be very mad at you. So it's a very important sort of middleman role. It's great also because the person who starts in this gets to know the fits really well. So it's very easy to transition from a product development position to a designer role within the same company. The next one I want to tell you about is technical designs and pattern makers. They're kind of a dying breed this day and age. You might see one, two pattern makers for a company. That's what we have at Western Glove. Um, but they're the people who really control the fit. They're specialized. Um, it's kind of becoming a really exciting field right now because we're seeing a big trend towards 3D pattern making. We are actually seeing now where you can step into a booth, much like a spray tan booth, where the camera will actually circle you and take all of your body measurements and create a 3D image of you. And then the pattern maker can take their 3D pattern, stitch it together, and 3D model it on you. And that's what I was actually working at at the office before I came here today, is the exciting world of 3D fits. And I'm actually going to show you one. I'm going to show you a YouTube one because it's far better than the one I'm working on. Um, this is OptiTex. It's one of the companies that does the 3D modeling. So we actually can do 3D runway collections nowadays to showcase your line. So if you're trying to show your collection to a salesperson across the globe, rather than having to you know, show them initial concepts or sew samples and ship them across the country and hope that the model that they bring in is the right size, you can have your standard fit model and virtually sew the garments, which is what it's going to do right now. The blue lines are stitching, and it's actually going to fit that garment and sew it around it. So it's actually sewing the 3D garment right onto the mannequin. So this is a way that they're cutting down samples. By cutting down samples, the designers can afford to do more expensive and fancier garments. We think that fashion is driven by style and creativity, but it's just as equally driven by cost. Especially in this day and age, everything comes down to how much you're willing to pay for something. So this is one of the new angles that we're really taking, where you can actually have whole 3D garments, whole deep lines, do your style presentations. The next one I want to tell you a little bit about is the product manager. This is sort of one of those gray area titles. What do they manage? They manage product. They're sort of the overseer of everything. Um, product managers often become the VPs or the senior directors who are in charge of the designers themselves in many cases. At Silver Jeans Company, our designers have to answer to their design director but also to the product manager. Product managers are looking after the development of all the trims, the fabrics, the materials. They're the ones who are setting the limits for the designer, saying you can have six tops, five pants, two jackets, telling them what price points they have to hit. Um, you may not think about it every day, but designers have to sit there and think about, okay, if I'm doing 20 pants, I need to have two pants at this price, two middle cost pants, and two really expensive pants. They're really taking care of the breakdown to make sure you not only have a really good looking line, but one that will appear to the entire range of your customers, that when it comes down to the retailers, they can merchandise and display in the store. Because not every customer wants to pay for a $120 pair of pants. Some of them want the $78 pair of pants, and that's what our team really has to focus on. Um, this is a really good position, again, to get into as an entry level. You can come in as a junior assistant product manager. I got to tell you, this is probably the most boring position in the world. Everyone who's done it at our company hates it for the first six months because you're doing a lot of shipping and receiving samples, you're dressing the showroom, you're preparing line sheets like the image you see in the bottom right corner here. But if you can tough it out for six months to a year, there's great internal promotions. Because a lot of fashion companies don't like to hire externally. They like to promote from internally. So if you get in in a really simple, easy position like this, that you can do with even just an administrative assistant job, background, or basic Excel or word processing skills, you can very easily move up. Um, at Silver Jeans, we hire a lot of these people 
um, for part-time temp positions in the summer or for girls who are looking to do their practicum, and then we end up bringing them on board later for a full-time position. So it's a really good way to start out. It also can be a fun position. Our product managers, as I said, are the overseers of the line. They're communicating with our sales team to make sure they have all the right samples, that they know what the costs are, that they have everything they need to go out and sell the line to the retailers. As such, our product managers get to enjoy fancy dinners out, whining and dining the salespeople, as well as going to an annual conference called Magic, which is a huge trade show in Vegas. And I mean, really, who doesn't want to go to Vegas for a weekend? So off some couple samples, do a little gambling. I know you guys can't do that yet, but believe me, by the time you're in industry working like me, you'll enjoy the weekend to go gamble. Buyers and merchandisers, this is my favorite. If you're like me and you have a magnet on your fridge that says born to shop, then this is the place for you. Um, if you love watching that new TV show, Fashion Star, I'm addicted to it myself, um, we see everybody competing to have the big stars, H&M, Macy's, Saks on Fifth Avenue buy their collections. And we see them throwing $120,000 or $50,000 at these designs. Sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about it, it's only like 60,000 units across all of the US. That's, one for every how many people. And what the buyers are doing is they have these large amounts of money to play with to go out and buy the stock. The important thing though is that there's huge financial accountability in this position. You have to be able to buy, but you need to buy well. You have to back up with hard sell-throughs. You need to know who is your customer? Where does she shop? When does this product need to hit stores? You know, how to display it so it sells out fast? I can tell you that when I was a really new product manager, um, I was designing specials for a huge customer in the States called Maurice's. And what happened was our delivery fell back a month. You'd think, well, who cares if you get a pants a month late? Well, if you're a huge company and you're a buyer for this big company, you're planning to have that stock, 120,000 units in that store for back to school. Because we all know in that two week window is when all you guys are shopping for your back to school clothes. We missed our delivery by a month. Maurice has canceled a sale of 120,000 pairs of pants. It was the factory's fault, not mine, but I took the rap for it. So if you're gonna be in a buyer or product management position, you really have high accountability. You have to be on time, right product, right price, right time, all the time. This position, again, can be done without going through university. When I used to work at Moore's Clothing for Men, selling men's suits and tuxedos, they actually looked to their retail stores to promote people to these positions for their head office. Because what happened is they'd look at the managers and the district managers, because these people already knew the product and knew the customer, so they knew what sold. They knew what styles and what silhouettes and what colors. So they'll actually promote from within that way. Quality control. This is probably one of the more boring ones. This is kind of like the product development people. They're spending a lot of time measuring samples, making sure they fit right. Um, this is a very stable position. It's one that there is always going to be a need for. We find that even as we move product overseas to manufacturing, nobody likes to trust the people in China. It's just kind of a global perception. So most companies maintain a quality control system right here in, in Canada and North America. So it's got really good growth potential in this one. These also tend to be a lot of senior positions you can move into quite easily, which tend to have really great salaries behind them. These people are the ones who are testing to make sure your clothing is safe for you. I don't know if you guys ever stop and think about your clothing as being unsafe, but it actually could be. Um, nickel is a metal that a lot of people are allergic to. Do you ever stop and think about your belt buckle or the buttons on your pair of jeans or they're gonna cause an allergic reaction? Most people don't, but that's something quality managers are testing for. They're checking that your super fuzzy robe you wear when you get out of bed on Saturday morning isn't gonna catch on fire when you're cooking on something on the stove or if something sparks. That has happened in the States. It's a huge concern. We also find this really important because, I mean, how many of you would like to design a haute couture collection for Europe? Probably a lot of you. We're finding big countries in the Europe are being extremely particular now about what comes into their countries. As we said, a lot of manufacturing in China and India, people are scared. They're worried about, is there lead? Is there other harmful materials in our fabrics, in our clothing, things that are against our skin that can leach into us? I was watching CSI last night, and they were talking about a chemical that was put on. It was nicotine poisoning in the clothing, and the people were actually dying from it. So we have to be very careful about the treatments because when you're washing jeans, you're running a lot of chemicals through there. 
So these are the people who are doing those tests to make sure that all of your clothing is perfectly safe so that it can be shipped to those haute couture houses, you know, or even the little local shops here in Canada. Textile Sciences is really new, and I do like to call this one out special because it's very different from the rest of the fashion field. Most of fashion, we're looking at creative, design, merchandising, retail, selling. Textile Sciences is really getting into the backbone. I want you to think about, you know, the new innovative fabrics that we see. Everybody loves Lululemon. Everyone loves Lululemon pants. Why? Because they're not only breathable, they're super comfortable and stretchy, and they make your bum look great, or at least so all the guys tell me. Well, the textile designer, the textile science major, is the person who developed that fantastic fabric. They're the one you have to thank for that. They're the one you have to thank for those little t-shirts that light up, that have all the funky designs that glow when you're walking around the club or walking around the street that everybody likes to buy. These, again, are the important position. They're the ones helping the quality control managers to test for all those harmful materials. We also know that we have a great aging population. How many people are going to be retired in the next couple years? These are the people who are looking at medical textiles, health textiles, things like sutures and bandages, biodegradable fabrics, antimicrobial fabrics. So if you're somebody who really likes to help people, this can be an interesting avenue for you. Uh, the University of Manitoba here in Winnipeg is one of the few schools in the country that has a program of this nature. So if it's something you're interested in, um, it's really leading top of the edge technology. It's a market that is going to be growing very fast and steadily, faster than some of the other regions. Um, in general, textiles and fashion should be growing around 12%, but I think we're gonna see a bulk of it going towards this stream. This also tends to have the most regular hours. As I said, in a lot of the fashion industry, you're working really late as designers. You may be redoing your style, starting over. In this one, you're doing a lot of lab processing work, so it tends to be a little more Monday to Friday, better hours, potential for government jobs. And lastly, if you're like me, even though you have a day job and you do product development and product management, you get kind of bored and you still want to do your own design things. So if you want, there's the avenue you can start your own business. And that's what I've done. I have my own bridal and formal design company. It's actually quite easy to start up something like this if you want. You just need to have a business plan. And this is essential because your business plan is how you're going to get your money. You need somebody to throw some money behind you unless you happen to have a rich dad, which I don't. You need to have good marketing skills. You need to know how to get your product to your customer. Who's going to buy it? You need to know. Basically, how old is your customer? What is their lifestyle? How much money do they want to spend and where do they want to shop? Uh, one of the really easy avenues to start off is do an online website. It costs maybe 100 bucks a year, a little bit of shipping costs, and you can be up and running. It's something you can easily start off doing a portfolio and build into. It also requires having a lot of patience. As we know, it's not going to grow overnight. Start small, a small collection, continue to grow on it. The other reason I mention this is that I look around the room and the majority of you are females. And I'm sorry guys, but in Manitoba we have a fantastic Women's Career and Business Center that will give large amounts of grants and money and loans and personal one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you ladies develop your own fashion design company if that's a route you want to take. Now, there is also a whole bunch available for everyone else in Canada. Um, there is a huge market for youth who want to be entrepreneurs. Anyone. I mean, some of you are going to be younger, but if you're anywhere from the 16 to 24 range, there's tons of money. Um, there's one grant they were telling me about that will throw four or $5,000 at you if you're going to be full-time starting your own business, just for startup costs. So there's fantastic opportunities that are available to you if you want to go that avenue. So how and where to start? Again, I do reiterate, I do highly suggest having a degree in technical background. While a lot of these careers you can get into without necessarily having to have a degree, it is that step up that's going to give you that little bit against somebody else. Start a portfolio. If you're doing sketching right now, keep a collection of that. Build an online portfolio. I like to recommend sites like LinkedIn. There's a fantastic resource. For those of you who don't know, LinkedIn is basically the Facebook for adults. It's the networking business Facebook, and it's got everything from being able to post your job and your resume, your career background, your education, to groups that you can subscribe to that will teach you about your product. I knew nothing about washing jeans. I can sew them with my eyes closed, but I don't know how to do, how to set a rivet properly, how to do a wash or an abrasion, or what TNT meant before. 
but you can subscribe to these groups and you can read up and partake in discussions and find out what are the new trends in the industry. You can get free color trend research that normally costs a fortune. There's so many different things available to help you grow as a designer because what you're gonna find is that when you go out to apply for jobs, it's gonna be very neck and neck. And what sets you apart from the next person is, in my case, one week of job experience. Somebody who had one week's practicum beat me for the first five jobs I applied to. So it really comes down to how much technical skill do you have and how well can you present that to everyone. I also want to recommend apparelconnection.com. It's a fantastic website, especially for where you are now. As a student, you can sign up. It'll give you access to people who can be your mentor, who can help tutor you, who can help you develop your skills, who can point you in the right direction for the right courses and skills, as well as where they're all located in Canada. Um, the other one I would recommend is do not underestimate retail experience. All of you are going to have to work to pay for school, again, unless you happen to have rich parents. Retail experience actually is solid for the fashion industry, and we think everybody and their dog works retail at some point, right? But what you do when you work retail can be really helpful. I started off working at Fabricland. Glorious, exciting Fabricland. <laughs> Um, but it was really helpful because when I worked there, I had to know how to read a pattern. I had to know how to calculate how much yardage to make a curtain, to make a shirt, to make a pair of pants. I had to know all the trims that went together, how to know what size to cut out, how to modify the pattern if somebody is in between different sizes. I also got to help out with the purchasing and the ordering of our fabrics and our notions and our trims and all the components that go together. So when I went out to apply for jobs, I found that big companies like Nygaard were calling me because business ordering experience isn't something that everybody has. A lot of people have technical schooling, but they don't necessarily have the practical experience behind it. And again, like I said, when I worked at Moore's, they were looking to the retail level to promote for buyers. Ricky's is another company. Their head office is located right here in Winnipeg, and they like to recruit new buyers, and that's a great position to start off getting into. So what can you expect in the career? Many, most of you right now are gonna go right to the salaries. Fashion pay sucks to start, I'm not gonna lie. You start off making about as much as you pay for your degree and you start to wonder how you'll ever get out of debt. But like I said, you can start off in those low level positions, you can quickly get up to the average, you know, uh, product managers you're seeing 40, 50 thousand dollars a year, same for quality control. Um, the interesting thing that I found, even checking the recent salaries is that your entry level position doesn't really matter if you're the pattern maker, sample maker, grader, assistant designer. You all start off about the same and you all kind of move up about the same. Um, if you can get to be the senior designer, the design director, the VP of apparel services, you can very easily exceed that 60K a year. Again, starting off with the small companies working your way up to the larger corporations. You do get to negotiate great vacations when you work in this industry because you're doing a lot of travel. You can tag your vacation time onto the end of your trip, get you a free, essentially a free flight to Hong Kong, spend an extra week on vacation there, and then fly home. I use it constantly to visit my best friend in Vancouver when I because you're always flying out of Vancouver to get overseas every time you're going someplace. And you know, also working in this industry, you're working with a lot of samples. So you get the opportunity to buy the newest, hottest fashions at a discount price. So it really can be quite excellent. Um, as I said, there is a lot of focus on the labor shifting overseas with manufacturing in China and India. Everyone still wants made in Canada, bought in Canada, homemade. So we are still seeing a lot of the design positions staying here in Canada. I can tell you when I started at Silver Jeans Company five years ago, we had factories still here in Winnipeg and we have since closed every single one of our factories. We even closed our sample making. We don't do any of it here anymore. But we started off with a team of five people for Silver Jeans Company. And now we have, I think it's over 30 people. We have six designers now. And that team keeps growing every year. Uh, we've just added a whole new tops division, which is a completely exclusive team out in Montreal, which I'm sure is going to be growing and hiring new people in the next couple of years. So don't be discouraged when everyone says, oh, everything's moving offshore. There's still a lot of design to be happening in fashion right here at home in Winnipeg, as well as the other urban centers. So, um, lastly, I just want to end um, with a phrase from my website, dream big, make it yours, and anything is possible. The options really are limitless. Where you choose to go with your career, if you choose to continue in fashion or any of the other careers you're seeing today, you're at a fantastic crossroads to be able to choose what direction you want to go. 
Um, there is so many fantastic programs and avenues that you can take. I would like to invite you at this point, if you do have any questions, to bring them forth to me. Otherwise, if you're shy, I do have business cards on the table here. But I think and I hope that this has given you a really good idea of what's available to you in the fashion industry. That's all I have. Thank you for listening. Anybody want to bug me with questions? I know I threw a lot at you. It's okay. <laughs>